Can we give a little hand praise on tonight? Amen. Hey, how, family, how are we doing tonight? Everyone doing well tonight? Yes, yes, yes. My name is Pastor Phil. I'm one of the pastors here at On Ramps Covenant Church. Just want to welcome all of you to On Ramps. On Ramps, we are a healing community, healing our community, where the healed become healers. Um, aren't you so blessed that you worship a God who is holier than you? Aren't you so blessed that you worship a God that is capable of loving in ways that are beyond even your capacity to love? The Bible says that, that, that we are holy because he is holy. That we are able to love because he loved us first. Okay, 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 you, you don't believe me. Um, the Bible says this, that every good and perfect gift comes from above. And so tonight we come, we gather in many ways to worship God, this God who is holier than us, this God that is more loving than us, this God that is more forgiving than us, this God that is more merciful, more gracious, more everything than us. How many of you are dependent and reliant on God? How many of you are grateful that you get to worship this God? How many of you are grateful that this God loves you? Y'all don't sound so grateful tonight. I don't know what's happening. Maybe this group is grateful. How many of you are grateful that God loves you? They're so, see, y'all got jealous because I went over here and they was like, I was like, how many? And they were like, oh, yeah. And they all of a sudden I heard out in the right ear. I was like, oh, I thought I was like, no, see, God is so good. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. The Bible says that he's jealous also, just like this group over here. You know what I mean? Uh, no, I'm kidding. So uh, it is wonderful to be here, and we're so glad that you've joined us tonight. Um, I want to share with you a few things, just logistics, and also some important announcements, things that you should be aware of as part of this community. First of all, uh, men, the, your restroom is, is right back here to my left. Ladies, uh, we are actually in the process of remodeling your restroom right now. <laughs> And it's coming along wonderfully, so in the interim, please be patient with us. Ladies, if you need to use the restroom, you'll just head down those double doors there to my right, okay? And, uh, and on the left-hand side, there's a restroom in the activity center for your use. Um, speaking of the women's restroom, don't forget, immediately following tonight's gathering, Pathway Women's Ministry has a dessert silent auction in the activity center for all of us to enjoy, and the proceeds of that that silent auction will go toward the full and complete remodeling of the women's restroom. How many of you are willing to eat some dessert in order to be a blessing? Anybody willing to eat some dessert tonight? All right, very good. We're grateful for your support tonight. I um, also want to mention... A couple of other things. Um, we have our elders on duty tonight. Pat, Anna, can you all just raise your hand there in the back corner there? They're here to serve all of us tonight. Um, I want to just acknowledge that, that you might be in a really hard place uh, or a hard season in your life. And the thing that you need most tonight, the way in which this community tonight can bless you, is that we could pray for you. And we're going to pray for you. If you would like someone to pray for you at any point tonight, what you can do is just go see uh, Pat or Anna, or right back here uh, in the back corner, there is a cross and a table and some ribbon hanging from the cross. And you can also write down your prayer requests, and we will provide those to the elders of this church this week, and they will pray for you this week. A couple of other things I wanted to mention tonight. Uh, first of all, uh, this coming Tuesday, I'm really excited about it. This Tuesday um, is Bible study and potluck. And so please, we want to welcome you. We want to invite you to join us. Bring something to share for potluck and then stay for Bible study. We have something for all ages. And then this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. It is the beginning of Lent. If you are following on ramps on social media, Pastor Eric will share more information about what to expect for Ash Wednesday um, this week and for Lent so that we can participate as a community.
community. A few other things I want to make sure you're uh, paying attention to is that we are part of this community. This neighborhood matters to on ramps. This is the Lowell neighborhood. And so this community, uh, for those of you that want to be a blessing to this community, you say, well, I don't have a lot of time. You know, I, I can't, can't do a lot. Listen, next time you're at Dollar Tree, next time you're at the 99 cent store, next time you're at Five Below, wherever you're at, just buy some school supplies. And we collect them, and then we end up supplying the school supply closet at Lowell for all of the kids and all of the teachers there. You don't need to wait for a special occasion. Just next time you're there, grab them. Next time you come to on-ramps, bring them. That's how that works. I'll say it again. Next time you're at the store, grab them. Next time you're here, bring them. One more time. Next time you're at the store, grab them. Next time you're here, bring them. That's all that. Ha that's how that works. It's over and over again. It's an easy deal. Um, also, a few upcoming things. We're so excited, y'all. We're hiring an operations manager uh, here at the church. For more information, you'll be here you're watching a video later, but also if you want more information for yourself or if you want to share it with somebody else um, that you know that could be a good fit for on-ramps, uh, just email info at onrampschurch.org, info at onrampschurch.org. Org. Next Saturday, we are going to be uh, participating in communion. Somebody say communion. communion. That's happening next Saturday. Also next Saturday, if you have uh, become a missional member, a missional member of On Ramps Co Covenant Church in the last couple of months, would you just stand where you are, stand where you are? If you become a missional member of On Ramps in just the last few months, would you stand where you are? Just stand. Jackie, that's you. Tasha, there you go. Malachi. Yep, 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 yep. There we go. Yep, Sarah, Dave. Okay. So uh, these folks and others, we will be welcoming officially next Saturday. Um, and so you all can have a seat now. Thank you for standing. Uh, but we are so grateful. The mission that God has called on ramps to is not possible without missional members and without this body uh, as a whole. It is so critical and we are so thankful for those that have become missional members recently. Last but not least, I want to make sure that you are uh, looking forward to this. Next Saturday is sort of the culmination of Black Black History Month, and so on ramps following our gathering. There's a lot happening next Saturday, man. I'm gonna be here for sure. Um, next Saturday, culmination of Black History Month, we have a special. Very special Black History Month celebration in the cafe following the gathering next Saturday, hosted by our very own Cadence and Kaylin Sky. Y'all give it up. Give it up. All right. Well, listen, let me, uh, I want to just read our call to worship tonight. Uh, Pastor Eric's going to put it on the screen. I'm going to invite you to read it with me. It is uh, out of Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. Are you all ready? All right, let's read it together. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Amen, amen, amen. Y'all, wait, 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 wait. Y'all lost me. Y'all lost me. Y'all, y'all lost me. Y'all lost me. Y'all lost me. Y'all lost me. All right, we're going to finish this up together. You ready? All right, one, two, three. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. This, this word health up here. Uh, that word health is going to be very significant for us tonight. It's been significant for us all month long. You'll be hearing more about that later on this evening. All right, let me just pray for us. Would you just kind of posture yourselves in this moment? Just posture yourselves in this moment as we begin to pray. I want to invite you to bring all of yourself to the Lord tonight. 
Hallelujah. Father, we honor your presence in this place. God, it is in the silence that we hear you often the best. It is in our stillness that we most experience your love, your grace, and your forgiveness. Father, tonight we receive all of that and so much more. Father, I pray that you will heal us tonight in ways that we are in need. Father, I pray that you will minister to us, God, to do a work in us that would reconcile us amidst all of the relationships that are strained in our lives. God, I pray that we would draw nearer to you and that you would draw nearer to us. We love you. We love you so much. We honor you in this place. This is your sanctuary. We are your people. You are our God. We give you glory tonight for it all and bless your name. In Christ's name we pray together. Let us say amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hey, listen, family, I'm so excited. Can you all give it up? Because tonight we have the choir coming to lead us tonight. Let's go. Amen, amen. It's good to be back. The choir hasn't sang since before September Selah. If you remember, yeah, it's been a minute. So pray for us. We're missing a few of us, but you know what? God is faithful. Yeah, we're recruiting. Lindsay like said we're recruiting. For sure. Where's Jackie? Yes. We're recruiting. So please, we'd love to have you join us. The song says, All in His Hands. Have you ever put everything in God's hands? Or have you taken some of that back and tried to fix some of the stuff mm. yourself? How many of you do that? Take some of the All stuff the time. back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you ever put this and that in his hands and then took that back too? So this song says, all in his hands, I put it on his hands. This and that and everything else, put it on his hands.
Hallelujah. Amen. The song says, God has changed. A wonderful change has come over me. He changed my life and now I'm free. Anybody have that testimony? He changed my life.
Hallelujah. Family, if Jesus changed your life, just raise your hand and wave it in the air. If Jesus changed your life, just thank him right now. God, I thank you. If Jesus has done anything for you, why don't you just give him praise for all he's done in your life. We give you glory. He's changed my life, made me whole, forgiven me, made a way when there was no way. He's blessed me over and over and over again, even when I didn't deserve it. He gave me a first chance, a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance, a fifth chance, a sixth chance, a seventh chance, an eighth chance. I messed up that relationship. He let me have another relationship. I messed up that friendship, and he gave me three more friends. God has been so faithful to me. If he's been faithful to you, just give God praise one more time tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Family, uh, we have been celebrating as a community Black History Month here in the month of February. And so tonight, um, tonight I am just so uh, blessed uh, to be able to share uh, yet another uh, significant member of the black community um, by the name of Jackie Robinson. And so I want to share a little bit about uh, Brother Robinson. Uh, Brother Jackie, uh, from its foundation in the 1880s, uh, the Major League Baseball Association uh, was only open to players that were white. Robinson changed that when he started at first base for the Brooklyn Dodgers. I know H. Speed's a Dodgers fan. Um, on April 15th, 1947. Uh, just for, for the record, we do have a quota of Dodgers fans. We cannot allow any more at on ramps. Just saying that. <clears throat> but uh, Mr. Robinson uh, uh, changed all of that when he started at first base in April 15, 1947. When the Dodgers signed Robinson, it heralded the end of racial segregation in professional baseball that had relegated black players to their own league since the 1880s. During, this, during his 10-year Major League career, Robinson won the inaugural Rookie of the Year Award in 1947, was an All-Star for six consecutive season, seasons from 1949 to 1954, and won the National League Most Valuable Player Award in 1949, the first black player to ever receive that honor. Robinson played in six World Series in 10 years and contributed to the Dodgers' 1955 World Series championship. Robinson's character, his use of nonviolence, and his talent challenged the traditional logic of segregation that had then marked many other aspects of American life. He influenced the culture of and contributed significantly to the civil rights movement. Robinson was also was the first black television analyst in Major League Baseball history and the first black vice president of a major American corporation, uh, chock full of nuts. In the 1960s, Robinson helped establish the Freedom National Bank, an African-American-owned financial institution based in Harlem, New York. After his death in 1972, Robinson was posthumously awarded the Congressional Gold Medal and Presidential Medal of Freedom in recognition of his achievements on and off the field. Jackie Robinson exemplified health in body, mind, and spirit, a person who was committed to performing to the best of his abilities and to competing with humility and honorable sportsmanship. Robinson is commended for holding on to the dignity of his full humanity while wrestling with systems and institutions that wanted to count him out because of who he was. For those of you looking for a, uh, a quick two-hour synopsis of some of Mr. Robinson's story, there was, of course, a movie that was, um, that was uh, made a number of years ago. Chadwick Boseman is the uh, star in it, and it is uh, called 42. So I want to encourage you to watch that uh, if you have the time. All right, family, we are talking about health tonight. Uh, we are in this series, and I am simply going to ask you to turn your attention to the screen as Pastor Eric is going to share, uh, I believe, two videos. One is going to be the operations manager video announcement, as well as uh, the sermon series introduction. Turn your attention to these screens. Hey, 
These are the fun videos because you get to make up the words yourself. So you just you just participate. All right, so here we go. Um, I said, um, and then there was, uh, and I used my hands. And so you got to use your hands if you're serious about what you're saying. And so it's, it's the right hand first, and then, yes. Uh, that was my dignified look. Thank you. Daniel, I think we need you. Yep, yep, you got it. Hey everybody, Pastor Reese and Pastor Phil here, co-pastors of On Ramps Covenant Church right here in Fresno, California. And I don't know what you've been told, but the rumors are true. We're hiring. We are. It's amazing. The first time in our history, there's so much going on at On Ramps Church and so much happening in Fresno, California, that we join forces with our nonprofit, the On Ramps Economic Development Corporation, to hire an executive director for them and an operations manager for On Ramps Covenant Church. You need details. We want to give you details. To get details, simply email info at onrampschurch.org. You'll get all the information that you need. We want you to apply. We want you to spread the word. We are looking to hire. Can't wait for you to join our team. Hi, everyone. Pastor Phil, Pastor Reese, On Ramps Covenant Church here in Fresno, California. And we are excited to invite you to Tuesday nights at 6 o'clock and Saturday nights at 6 o'clock. Tuesdays for our impact groups for all ages and Saturday nights for our worship gatherings where this month we are going to be talking about hope, health, and healing. Listen, it's been a crazy time for so many of us and we get an opportunity to just pause and lean into some hope, lean into some health, and lean into some healing. I don't know about you, but I need all of that especially today so you need to lean that's the message lean in this month join us on ramps can't wait to see you 1955 broadway street we'll see you this month well uh he here we are you saw the video like a couple weeks ago and and you're here tonight so that's awesome like you already knew to come because that's what we were going to be talking about tonight. Uh, hope, health, and healing. The last two weeks, um, uh, Brandon actually started us off talking about holding on to hope. Like, as if you're on a roller coaster and you're like grabbing onto the bar in front of you or grabbing onto the seatbelt and you're holding on to that hope for dear life. And then Pastor Phil last week reminded us that there is no hope without love. There's no hope without love. And tonight we are going to shift into our health portion of the series. And then next week will also be um, a little bit more about health. And then the final two weeks, um, will, it, it actually, actually take us into March where we'll be talking about healing. So tonight, hope, health, and healing. Tonight we are going to be talking about health is the way forward. Can somebody just say health, health. is the way forward? Way forward. Health. health is the way forward. All right, so I asked a couple of people just like a couple of seconds ago to help me with something. Um, it's going to help demonstrate what I'm trying to share tonight. Uh, let's see. So these are bins. I have three of them. One, two, three. Three bins, yes. Um, I'm going to ask Miss Jackie. Come on up. Jackie has in her hands some flowers. So I'm going to ask Jackie to put those flowers in this bin. Awesome. Thank you, Jackie. All right. Um, I'm going to ask Mr. H. Come on up, Mr. H. Let's give it up for H. H has, what do you have? Towels. H has towels. So, I'm going to ask H to put these towels in this bin. Thank you, H. Um, Allie, come on up, Allie. I'm going to ask you to unzip that bag and put those in this bin. What do you have, by the way? Balls. Lots of different colors. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Here we go. It just, yep, there you go. All right, thank you, Allie. Oh, wait, let's put that purple one in there. Yep, okay. All right, so we have balls. Awesome. 
Um, so we have a flower bin. We have a towel bin. And we have a ball bin. Right? Okay. Do we expect to get balls out of the flower bin? No. What do we expect to get out of the out of the flower bin? Flowers. Flowers. Do we expect to get balls out of the towel bin? No. What do we get out of the towel bin? Owls. Do we expect to get flowers out of the ball bin? No. What do we get out of the ball bin? Balls. We get balls. Interesting because these are the same bins. They're the same bins. But what I put in the bin determines what comes out of the bin and determines what I call it. What I put in the bin determines what comes out of the bin and determines what I get to call it. Health is the way forward. What you consume, what's in your heart, what's in your mind, what comes in you is going to come out of you. What we allow ourselves to consume. You put towels in this bin, guess what you're gonna get out of the bin? Towels. We put in the bin, what comes out of the bin comes, do y'all see where we're going here? Yes. When we're talking about health being the way forward, we're talking about spiritual wholeness. We're talking about uh, the, the, the inside work that God wants to do. We're talking about putting flowers in the bin so that flowers can come out of the bin. We're not, we're not unwise to think that if I put balls in the bin, towels are gonna come out. Or if I put trash in the bin, flowers are gonna come out. No, you put trash in a bin, guess what's coming out of the bin? Trash. So this definition of biblical health which Barb will speak to a little bit more next week, but this definition is called sozo. Can someone say sozo? Sozo, it's this beautiful word that, that really means salvation, which means health and wholeness. It's not just our, our, us being saved from, from hell, but it's us being saved and being made whole health and wholeness it's spiritually healthy it's health from the inside out what's on the inside gives insight to our ability to live healthy lives in other areas if we are consuming the word of God if we are consuming worship music if we are consuming healthy relationships guess what's guess what's gonna come out right everything that we put in all of the balls that are in this bin are gonna come out. We can't expect what we, what, what, what we don't put in to come out. That's why many of us are struggling in our relationships right now is because we have expectations of people to do something and it's not in them to do it. But let me get back to my notes. Because I don't want to go there. Not yet. I'm gonna let Barb tackle that next week. But again, like, like, a, like a trash bin or like a toy bin or like a soda bin or a flower bin or a towel bin or a ball bin, what's in your heart, what's in your mind, because whatever that is, it's going to come out. It's going to come out. Perhaps you've heard the saying, health is wealth. How many of you have heard that saying? Yeah. Health is wealth. Yeah. Yeah. Your health is valuable and you are your greatest resource. You are. Yes, God is the source, but he uses you for you. You are your greatest resource. And many of us are struggling in our health. We're struggling in our lives because we don't trust ourselves. We don't know that we are our own resources. 
Like, I can't expect, my daughter's gonna make fun of me, I can't expect to get Michelle Obama arms if I'm not willing to lift weights. I have to be my resource and lift those weights, right? I have to do that. And the way you navigate the issues of life can have a significant impact on your health. What do I mean? I remember we were in uh, at Youth for Christ back when we used to gather at Youth for Christ and there was a woman who came in, never met her before, and she said, I'm just here for prayer. I need prayer. My back is in excruciating pain and I'm tired of the pain and I need, I need relief. I don't want this pain anymore. Can somebody pray for me? And so I was the one to pray for her and y'all know how I am. I just want to be obedient, right? So I was like, okay, yes, let's pray. Your back is hurting, let's pray. And immediately I saw, at the time the Lord used to speak to me by showing me banners over people's heads. And whatever that banner said, I was to pray into the opposite of that. So if it said witchcraft, I would pray into holiness, okay? If it said fornication, I would pray into uh, 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 spiritual and sexual health. I hope this is not too much for some of y'all. Okay. Well, for this particular woman, I know she came in to, to, to receive prayer for her back, but immediately over her head, I saw the word unforgiveness. And so I began praying for her to forgive the people in her life who hurt her. And she's like, wait, my back is hurting. What are you talking about? I said, I know your back is hurting, but what the Lord is telling me right now is that you, the pain that you are feeling in your back is just an indication of what's happening in your heart. You need to forgive some people. And immediately she started bawling and she started calling out different people's names. And as she began calling out their names and operating in forgiveness, she started the process of forgiveness. She started doing this and she was like, oh my goodness, my back is not hurting the way that it was when I first came came in here. What am I saying? The way that we navigate issues of life can have a significant impact on our health. I know when I'm stressing because I literally, literally don't, y'all gonna laugh, but I literally have a sharp pain in my left buttocks. Literally a pain in my butt, literally. I know when I'm stressing because my lower back, my lumbar, where the adrenal glands are, it gets inflamed and it hurts. I know when I'm stressing, when I have constant headaches and I cannot sleep at night. The way that we navigate issues in life have an impact on our health. Stop neglecting those pains that you're feeling in your body or that sleeplessness that you're dealing with at night. Stop neglecting that because I guarantee there's something else going on. There's something else going on. I guarantee there's something else going on. I had to cut out certain foods in my life because of how it was impacting me. And, I, and then I pause and I go, oh wait, whenever I eat this food, it would remind me of when I had lunch with so-and-so and they cussed me out. Hello? It ain't the chicken's fault. The chicken didn't do nothing to me. It was, it was the person that I ate chicken with. There are some restaurants in Fresno that my husband and I cannot go to because we had some really hard conversation with former staff members. And when I pass by, I'm like, ooh, I remember she was stabbing that salad so hard when she was mad at us. I can't order a salad from that place. It's not the salad's fault. It's not the chicken's fault. It's the issues of life that I still need to navigate that have an impact on my health. Pay attention to those things. I guarantee God is trying to tell you something. God's plan for our lives, here's the thing, God's plan for our lives is not just limited to our getting to heaven. Hello, sozo, 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 health and wholeness. Not just salvation, but health and wholeness. God's plan for our lives is not limited to our getting to heaven, but our ability to fulfill our purpose here on earth. So our ability to fulfill our purpose here on earth begins with our health. 
the work that happens on the inside of us first. Health is the way forward. Say it with me. Health is the way forward. Health is the way forward. And in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 8, we will discover how our faith leads to health through three ways. Our faith leads to health through obedience to God, through love and faithfulness, and through understanding and wisdom. And so I want to read for us again Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. And it says this, my son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Verse three, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Verse five, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. And finally, verses seven and eight, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. You see, Proverbs is a wisdom book where we are able to put God's instructions into action and live a life of learning of God and living for God. We learn of God and we live for God. And this is how we demonstrate health as a way forward. And I wanna submit to you tonight that some of us are stuck. We're stuck because we're not in good holistic health. You may have Muscles that'll win you the next bodybuilding contest. I do not care if you are a jerk, okay? It, 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 it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you are vegan and you avoid all meat products and meat byproducts, if you just cuss your neighbor out, you just a mean vegan, <laughs> right? It doesn't matter. Some of us are stuck because we're not in good holistic health. We're struggling unnecessarily because we are not learning of God and we're not living for God. I'm not saying struggles won't come, but some of us are struggling unnecessarily because we're not learning of God and we're not living for God. Unnecessarily struggling. But learning of God and living for God takes faith. Somebody say faith faith it takes faith and if and it's our faith that leads to health again our health is the way forward say it one more time health is the way forward and so to demonstrate how health is the way forward and these three points of 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 it being about our obedience to God and love and faithfulness and understanding and wisdom I've invited three special people to join me tonight and we're gonna ask them some questions, get all in their business, okay. So Casey and Pastor Eric and Cadence, come on up. Will y'all give it up for my, my family? Come on up. They're gonna help me demonstrate how health is the way forward and how our faith leads to health. Come on up. I hope y'all can see them. Let me scoot over a little bit. And Jess, you did such a beautiful job decorating, but I'm going to move this. Okay, thanks. <laughs> All right, so this is Casey. Y'all say hi to Casey. Hi, this is Pastor Eric. Y'all say hi to Pastor Eric. Hi, Pastor Eric. And this is Cadence. Y'all say hi to Cadence. Hi, Cadence. Cadence, I just have to say, is my favorite almost 17 year old favorite She's daughter my favorite actually. <gasps> don't say oh. and Kaylin is at home sick y'all so don't mm, don't don't tell her that she said that about her sister please <laughs> she said she'll already know it's on TV <laughs> so here's how our faith leads to health okay so number one health through obedience to God can you say obedience to God obedience, obedience to, to God, God. 
and that is um, coming from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Um, Casey, just a quick question for you. Have your parents ever asked you to do something bad? No, ma'am. Where's Brandon? Where's Jess? Okay. So your parents have never asked you to do anything bad? That's correct, ma'am. Have they ever asked you to do anything that was harmful to you? No, ma'am. Okay. So what have they asked you to do? And how did what they asked you to do, how did that lead to good results? Uh, when my mom would drop my sisters and I off before she um, um, said goodbye to us so we could leave for school, she said that we should pay attention in class and listen to our teachers. And um, when I did that, I got a 4.0 in school. Okay, okay, so, you're, so your, mom, your mom told you, Casey, Becca, Gabby, pay attention to school, in school, um, take good notes, do your homework, and as a result of those instructions, you got a 4.0. That is correct. Awesome, very good, very good, very good. So, so here's the thing about obedience to God is that God wants a say in our health. He wants a say in our health, and he wants to lead us on a good and healthy path. He has good plans for us, and when we follow him, we are choosing health. When we follow him, we are choosing life. When we follow him, we are choosing strength. When we follow him, we are choosing joy. When we follow him, we are choosing forgiveness and love. When we follow him, he's not going to ask us to do something bad. A teenager a long time ago asked me, how do you know when God's talking to you and when the devil is talking to you? And I simply pointed to John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy but I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly. Is what you are getting ready to do, is it gonna cause destruction? Is it gonna kill somebody or steal from somebody? If yes, then that's probably the devil talking to you. That is the devil talking to you. But if what you are doing, if, if what you were instructed to do, even if it's hard, even if it's inconvenient, even if it's costly, if what it yields is life more abundantly, then that's God talking to you. That's God talking to you, at least in my experience. So your parents told you, pay attention, and because you were obedient and you paid attention, you got a 4.0. Amen. Let's give it up for Casey. Se second point, health through love and faithfulness. That's in uh, Proverbs chapter three, verses three through four, but then also in Psalm chapter 46, verse 10, and it says, uh, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. I wanna submit to you that we can experience health through love and faithfulness. And so, Pastor Eric, will, would you be willing to share with us how, how spiritual formation practices love and faithfulness, how have spiritual formation practices contributed to your health and to your intimacy with God, your, your closeness, your attachment to God, your familiarity with God, because sometimes some are a little scared of that word intimacy, like, oh, I don't want really intimacy with God. It, closeness, yeah. he's your friend. How has that led to intimacy with God? Yes, well, um, thank you. I would say there's many ways, and we've been looking at a lot of them, and we'll be looking at more of them in our impact group, uh, which is spiritual formation and practices. So that's a shameless plug for Tuesday night. <laughs> Uh, 6 p.m. We have about, whoa, uh, look, it's getting too excited. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyway, but yes, I just want to affirm the things that you've been saying already, just that like the thing that God wants to do in our lives is holistic uh, and we are made as people holistically. Mm -hmm. And so you're right, like our body, our mind, our soul, uh, however you want to conceptualize it, right? These are all integrated in us and they all affect each other. Um, 
the body like keeps the score of a lot of physical things that have happened to us, emotional things that have happened to us. Uh, one thing that I just want to bring up, and if you've been around me for the last like month or two, I've probably told you this story already, but um, I just have started a, a journey of uh, like mobility and stretching. I've been relatively healthy enough to go, you know, I'm 35 now, okay? Uh, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> And I've just been rocking and rolling and doing my thing, but like now I'm just starting to feel it. And I'm like, oh, I, I really do have to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I feel like God has been teaching me through that process, even though that is like healing and, and but it's almost like God is teaching me something about a different aspect of my health through this journey of me increasing my physical health. Um, and that is how we approach our own um, spirituality and our spiritual life and formation. Like we can approach it through willfulness, through kind of grasping, through kind of, and I see this as like when I, back in the day, I would try to stretch and I'd be like, well, I'm bad at it because I would just kind of try to force it. Mm. I would try to force it with my own willpower. I would kind of try to have like a controlling approach to it. And the thing that I learned that really like changed my physical health uh, incredibly was about how, you know, you have to actually like, relax and like focus on your breathing and actually let your body relax and mm. kind of surrender to the, the stretch instead of trying to force it which actually tightens you up and mm. actually makes you less he flexible preaching. right surrender to the and stretch so, uh you know in the in the message uh the way that uh jesus is uh said to say it, it was like learn come and learn my unforced rhythms of grace mm -hmm. so it's like um a spirituality that revolves around surrendering uh, instead of kind of trying to force our holiness or force, uh, you know, our correct doctrine or kind of well, there's a willful approach to God that can actually kind of keep us away from the transformation that God desires. Mm. Uh, and then I think there's a posture of uh, openness and surrender to God that I'm learning a lot about right now. And so, so I'm thankful for that. And um, we're going to be learning more about that as we go through our class. Uh, not just that, but a lot of other things. The other, one more thing I would say is um, I've also been learning and am convinced about how uh, our spiritual health comes a lot through our ability to slow down and to pay attention. Yeah. So one thing we've been saying in our class is that we don't, like you don't come to church because like you think God is here like in a physical sense, uh, like God is here, but it's not like God was not where you left, right? Uh, <laughs> right. What we do when we come here to worship, what we do in any of our prayer practices, what we do when we are reading scripture, whatever it is, we are to attuning ourselves to the way God is already present and we are recognizing and attending to that presence. And so it's not that we have to, uh, we have to invoke or we have to kind of conjure God like, like God needs to be convinced to, to kind of like arrive mm. as if God wasn't already present everywhere, filling all things with himself, right? Um, but spiritual formation is about us training our ability to, to like have attention to how God is already present and already working in us and to partner with God in that. And so that's what I've been learning. Uh, it's thank good. you for it's asking. It's good, it's good. So intimacy, yes. Intimacy with God, closeness with God, attachment to God, familiarity with God leads to health and contributes to our health. Cadence, when we read Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6 and 7 and 8, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your, pa your path straight. Verses 7 and 8. What does it say, Pastor Eric? <clears throat> Verses 7 and 8 says, Do not be so, wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Cadence, tell us about a time where you had a chance to do something twice. The first time was a complete wreck complete mess but the second time yielded better results because of your own growth because of your own development your own um, because of your experiences and your understanding and your wisdom and what you've learned from messing it up the first time so like Casey I'm obviously a student 
Um, but unlike Casey, I do not have a 4.0 because junior year is hard. <laughs> it's really hard. We're not um, all winners. <laughs> What'd you say, Casey? We're not all winners. <laughs> <laughs> That's cold. <laughs> Wait till you get to high school, Casey. I'm, I'm gonna check on. I'm gonna check on you in a few years, okay? 4.0 and colors. 4.0 in the alphabet. <laughs> no, but um. Because I'm not, or part of why I'm not a 4.0 student is because I have some tougher classes. I have some subjects that I'm not as good in, and one of those, and one of those is um, my stats class. Mom, you know this because you you remind me about it constantly. But um, <laughs> um, in that class, we are actually not allowed to retake tests, and. <laughs> and I, my grade has taken a few hits because of that. Um, but what I can do is go in and talk to the teacher and review the test that I've done poorly on because obviously I can't do well on the next test going into it not knowing anything really about the previous test, you know? Um, you better preach. <laughs> Wait, say that again. Because that's a life lesson for somebody here tonight. No, for real. <laughs> Say that again, for oh, real. I don't really remember what I said, but you, you, I can't. You can't go into the, the next test. test not knowing anything about the previous one. Yeah. So wow. I, even though I can't improve my grade directly, and I can't retake the test directly, I still go in to ask her, okay, what can I do better? What is it that I messed up on this time so that I know what to do going forward? Um, and honestly, that's really helped when I do have the time to do that. Um, but then in my other subjects that I'm really strong in, um, like my uh, AP comp class, which is like English, um, I, I'm i really good at it naturally, I guess. And so I find it really fun to write essays and, and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and read and all this other stuff. And so um, recently, like, I think it was like Tuesday actually, and she like, um, she, told us how we did on an essay that we wrote in class. And she was like, and guys, Cadence, oh my gosh, her essay was this, that, and the third. And I just, it was so beautiful. And so I, in my mind, I'm like, oh yeah, I did that. Like, I, <laughs> I got 110%. Like, ooh, I was ready to get that paper back. And she handed it back to me, and it said 70 out of 100. And I was like, so you mean to tell me that you went out of your way to compliment it in front of everybody in the class for it to be subpar, like that's not that's not what I was expecting. So then, um, obviously, like I did in stats, I went to the teacher and I talked to her about it and what can I do better because it was just the rough draft of the essay, it wasn't the final. So obviously, I'm going to take advantage of that and do what I need to do to get a perfect score on the actual essay. So I went to her, I talked to her about it. She was like, "Yes, it was a beautiful essay, and I really enjoyed it. All those things were true, but it didn't have what I was looking for in it. Like it was good, but it didn't meet this." A requirement. I still needed more evidence. I still needed more sources. All of this, and so um, really, just like the lesson out of all of that was that, like, even though it's good for me, it's it's good to my standards. It's like not what she was looking for, and I can still do better. Um, anyways, all that to say is <laughs> to to go out of your way and and see what you need to work on, even though you think you did that great. There's always somebody else's standards. There's always God's standards. Um, our standards are not the cookie cutter for every other, you know, <laughs> expedition you go on in life. <laughs> so, so, yeah. That's good. That's good. I got a whole lot of nuggets out of that. Um, but yes, our health, our health is connected to our ability to learn information and learn from our experiences. And the two things that Caden said that I really appreciate it was, number one, we, we get to take lessons from this test into the next test so that we can do better in that new test. And then the second thing that she said, it reminded me of Lord Jesus, it reminded me. She said, you know, like her teacher was like, oh my gosh, it was a beautiful essay, but here's your score. And she's like, but you said it was a beautiful essay, but this score doesn't reflect what you talked about. And the teacher said, yeah, because this isn't what I asked for. It's a beautiful paper, but you missed some points that I 
set the standard for. Notes aside, some of us are tired and frustrated because we're doing things, good things, but we're doing things that God never asked us to do. I remember when our girls were younger, their chores, Cadence does uh, the upstairs bathroom in her room, Kaylin does her, her room and the kitchen. One time, they came to our room and they were folding our clothes and vacuuming and all kind of great stuff. I was like, whoa, is it like Mother's Day? Like, what's going on, Mother's Day? It was beautiful. And when they finished, we were like, thank you girls so much, this is awesome. Now, what about your room in the bathroom? What about your room in the, in the kitchen? They're like, but we did all this work for you. Yeah, and we said, thank you, but you still need to do the work that we assigned to you. Yeah. Hello? Many of us are tired and we're living unhealthy lives because we're doing things, good things, God never asked us to do. It wasn't our assignment, it was Lydia's assignment or Bud's assignment or Benny's assignment, okay? That was for free. Can we give it up for our panel? It's awesome. Thank you, panel. It's good, 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 good. So again, we are able to attain health through obedience to God, through love and faithfulness, and through understanding and wisdom. And I wanna leave you with this final point tonight. And after talking about health, we're going to go to the activity center and bid on some desserts. <laughs> who planned tonight? I don't even know who planned tonight. <laughs> Hilarious. But I want to leave you with this final point. And uh, if, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to um, Proverbs chapter 15, verses uh, 29 through 31. The final point after we learn about uh, attaining health through obedience to God, health through love and faithfulness, health through understanding and wisdom, we now go to Proverbs chapter 15, verses 29 through 31, and it says this. Mm, mm, mm. Y'all not ready for this one. It says this. <laughs> the way of the sluggard is blocked with thorns, but the path of the upright is a highway. A wise son brings joy to his father, but a foolish man despises his mother. Folly brings joy to, the one, to one who has no sense, but whoever has understanding keeps a straight course. So I wanna to submit to you tonight for our final point is that we attain health through righteousness and through correction. Through righteousness and through correction. What is righteousness? Righteousness, I wanna to submit to you tonight, is right or godly living based on right or godly thinking by way of right or godly teaching through Jesus Christ. It's not your own method. Many of us are trying to walk this Christian journey out on our own, in our own righteousness, and we're getting frustrated, we're getting upset, we're saying, you know what, I just can't do this anymore, it's too hard. But at the foundation, you need to ask yourself, what am I being taught? And how is what I'm being taught influence what I'm thinking? And how is what I'm thinking, how is that influencing my behavior? Righteousness and correction. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 13 and 14 says this, says, anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Righteousness, righteousness, right or godly living, based on right or godly thinking by way of right or godly teaching. What about correction? Mm, 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 mm. I'm going straight home after this, okay? <laughs> correction comes by way of accountability. Somebody say accountability. 
Some of y'all couldn't say that word because you think it's a cuss word. Wow. Stay out of my business. Who are you? I don't have to answer to you. Accountability simply means answerability. Are you able to answer for your, for your actions and your decisions? Are you able to be responsible for your actions and decisions? Accountability is not a curse word. It's not a curse word. It's a corrective word. Are you able to be accountable? Correction also comes by way of spiritual training. Somebody say spiritual training. First Timothy chapter four, verse eight says this. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. Spiritual training, what Pastor Eric was talking about, slowing down, prayer, fasting, meditating on scripture. And although it may seem painful and difficult at first, no training feels pleasant at the time, but will produce a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. We think about this word discipleship and it's a little hard for us to, to, to grasp. We think about this word discipline and it's a little hard for us to grasp. But what if we go back to the root? In the Greek, the word is, say it with me, say it after me, gumnasia, gumnasia. And when you see it written out, it looks like the word gymnasium. What are we sitting in right now? Okay? So when we talk about discipleship, when we talk about discipline, it is the word gymnasia, gymnasium. It's all about training. It's all about exercise. It's all about surrendering to the stretch, Pastor Eric. That's what discipleship is. And this is how we attain health, through righteousness and through correction. We also uh, receive correction by way of godly advice. Somebody doesn't want to hear this part, but I'm going to say it anyway. In the message, I love, I love the, the, the message translation by Eugene Peterson, Proverbs chapter 5, verse 31. It says, listen to good advice if you want to live well. Simple. Listen to good advice if you want to live well. It's not about people being in your business. It's about some of us have more experience and we've been down that road and we're telling you, don't do it, baby. It's going to break your heart. But because you're so full of pride, you want to do it anyway. And then you come back to us and you say, can you pray for me? Because this happened and I don't know what happened, but it happened. And we're like, we'll pray for you. I'm not going to say I told you so, but I will tell you that I'll pray for you. And we're going to get you some resources so that you don't get back in that same position again. Godly advice from healthy leaders, godly advice from community, uh, relational health matters. Some of us are getting uh, advice from people that we're bonded to through trauma, trauma bonding, and we're wondering why we're stuck. I want to submit to you is probably because you're not getting godly advice from a healthy community. You're getting advice, but it's based on and rooted in trauma, the trauma that has bonded you. And so we just break those strongholds in Jesus' name. Yeah, we break those strongholds in Jesus' name. This godly advice does not lead to condemnation or shame. This godly advice uh, does not lead to negative views of yourself or of others. If you're talking to somebody like, girl, I need help with such and such, and they're like, well, first of all, and then he was like, oh, and I knew he wasn't no good anyway. Did it? No, 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 no. That's not godly advice. That's gossip. And it may feel good hearing it at the time, but it's not going to change your life. This godly advice does not lead to behavior modification, but it leads to transformation in every area of your life. And next week, Barb is going to speak about the three parts of our health, the spirit and the soul and the body. But the, the point is, is that it's not too late to change. It's not too late to grow in health. It's not too late to pursue help. As long as you can put your hand on your heart and you feel the cadence of the beat, you're still alive and it's not too late.
Again, biblical health, sozo, salvation, it means health and wholeness. It's, we're talking about spiritual health, health from the inside out. What, what's on the inside gives insight to our ability to live healthy lives in other areas. Again, just like this flower bin, just like this towel bin, just like this ball bin, what goes in determines what comes out and determines what we call it. So I want you to examine yourself and ask, what is in my heart? What's in my mind? Because whatever is in my heart, whatever is in my mind, it will come out. You know, how, have you ever been in an argument with somebody and they say, I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. They really did just give you a piece of their mind. It was in their mind and they just gave it to you. It came out. It came out. Or if somebody says, gives you a backhanded compliment or calls you a name, or, oh, I was just playing. No, you weren't. The Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It, you really feel that way about me. Just because you added LOL at the end of the text doesn't mean that it was funny. and doesn't mean that you were laughing out loud. That's the most passive-aggressive emoji these, these days, LOL. Don't know. You meant that. It was in your heart, and it came out. It was in your mind, and it came out. And so my challenge for you all tonight, between tonight and next Saturday when Barb is up here taking us a little deeper, my challenge to you is to be mindful of what you put in your bin this week. Be mindful of what you are watching. Be mindful of what you are listening to. Be mindful of what you are consuming. Be mindful. Pay attention. Take note. Keep your eyes open about what you are putting into your bin. Just seven days. Now, some of us going to go to the dessert auction, and we're going to say, shoot, I got to start all over. Day one, m minute one, I got to start over. That's okay. Grace. But pay attention. And if you need to, find somebody tonight before you leave and say, hey, Nina, can you be my accountability partner just this week? Because I want to make sure that I'm not spending four hours on social media. So can you check in with me at the end of every day? And I'm going to, on my iPhone, go and I look at how much time I spent on entertainment. And if it says more than four hours, oh, Nina I, I, Nina, I need you to just... I need you to shake it. I need you to shake me up and say, girl, do better tomorrow. Find an accountability partner tonight if you feel like you need to. So that over the next seven days, you'll be helped. You'll be helped. You'll be supported. You'll be loved and cared for as you pay attention to what you're, what you're consuming. Again, what goes in your bin is going to come out. So I want to pray for us tonight. I want to pray for us tonight. I want to pray for us tonight. Health is the way forward. And I want to pray for each of you. Perhaps you are struggling in uh, your relational health. Perhaps you are struggling spiritually. Perhaps you are struggling in your financial health. That's something we don't talk about a lot. Financial health. Some of y'all broke unnecessarily. You got money, but you spend it frivolously. And then you're at the, 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 what's it called? The payday lender, payday loan lender place, trying to take out money. And you're like, and then the next month and you owe more and more. Like, no, uh-uh. Let's, let's be healthy. Let's start tonight. Mental health, emotional health. Let's start tonight. Let's start tonight. Let's start tonight. So I'm going to pray, and I just want to declare Third John 2 over you all tonight. And can you just, um, just... Just extend your hands with your, your palms open as a sign that you are willing to let go of the unhealth, but that you're also open to receive the health that God wants to bring to you tonight. And so 3 John 2, dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. 
God, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you for this day. We thank you that you are good and your mercy endures forever. We thank you that we get to attain health and lean into health by way of obedience to you. We thank you that we get to attain health through love and through faithfulness. We thank you that we get to attain health through understanding and wisdom. And we thank you that we get to attain health through righteousness and correction. So Lord, would you lead us? Would you be the good shepherd that you are and lead us? We cannot do this on our own. So thank you for that reminder that you are God and we are not. And we stand in your righteousness. We are clothed in your righteousness, not our own. So Holy Spirit, would you lead us? Would we find you to be so close over the next seven days as we lean into this challenge of being mindful of what we consume and being mindful of what we put in our bins? God, we thank you that you are able to do more exceeding and abundantly more than what we ask or imagine according to your power that works in us. So God, we activate that power now. We activate our faith now and we say, do it, God. We submit ourselves to you. And we love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. I hope this was helpful for you all tonight. I hope this was helpful for you all tonight. As we head into the, ca uh, into the activity center for our dessert silent auction, I want to remind you that whole life giving is in the cafe. It's our way of saying tithes and offerings, everything that you give to, to God's mission through on-ramps, it matters, whether it's a dollar or a thousand dollars, it matters and it stays right here in this neighborhood. I wanna remind you of Tuesday night Bible study, potluck and Bible study, potluck. It doesn't have a theme anymore, so bring chips, bring salsa, bring drinks, bring spaghetti, make sure it's good, but bring it. <laughs> bring it, okay, bring it. Bring chicken wings, pick up a pizza from Little Caesars on your way, bring it. Um, also, uh, uh, Lowell Elementary School Supply, please make sure you bring that. Bring your, your, your pencils and your markers. Bring all that. Uh, hand it to uh, Jess and Brandon uh, on a Tuesday night or a Saturday night. We want to make sure that Lowell knows that we love them. We should get some shirts that say, we love Lowell. Anyway, I thought I would wear it. I would wear it all the time. And then finally, don't forget, um, our, we're hiring for an operations manager. If you know anybody who, who is interested in working with our team, where is our team? Jere is here. Uh, Brandon is here. Jess is here. Pastor Phil is here. I'm here. Pastor Eric went through there. Like, we have a lot of fun on staff. Like, we're really good friends, and we love hanging out and eating. Oh, my gosh, do we eat? Um, so if you know somebody, or maybe it's you yourself, Please, please apply. Uh, don't forget, next Saturday, we will be um, participating in communion together, as well as welcoming our missional members, as well as our final um, Black History Month celebration after the gathering. So thank you all for being here tonight. Again, I want to just invite you now into the Activity Center. And as I've been saying recently, I want to tell you to go in peace, not in pieces. God bless y'all. Follow Joseph.